actually th I would actually really love Tia to do the inner I want Tia to I want them to do as much of the lead on this. So if you want to just kind of introduce yourself, mm -hmm. introduce the panel, and then um, and and then you can just yeah I guess introduce me too, and then okay. I'll just start we'll start, I'll start asking the questions. Okay. Okay, greetings. Uh, my name is Tia Thompson, and I am a registered nurse here in the state of Arizona. I'm also a doula. Um, I've also taught childbirth education classes as well, and I'm here okay, today so representing Bring It In The Spirit, which is um, a wonderful documentary uh, about the history of black midwives in America and a lot of the obstacles that they have faced throughout history and where we are today in regards to midwifery, um, and also the statistical rates as far as infant mortality in the black community and how midwives, specifically black midwives, are needed to bring that number down, to reduce those numbers. And so today upon our panel, we have here Mrs. Laverne. Laverne Calvin Stevenson. Calvin Stevenson, thank you. And she's also, um, she's a midwife of 16 years. She comes to Arizona from Texas. Um, and then she can speak more on herself as well, but we also have Fatima Muhammad who is a doula. She's a parent educator and also um, a maternal infant uh, child af um, advocate in Arizona as well. And then we have Marina, who is a midwife, an awesome midwife in Arizona in the Phoenix area. And um, we're glad to have everyone here on the panel today. So I uh, kind of, um, first of all, I'm just really happy that you all presented this film because it's really important to, it's so important, I can't even, it should be shown at every conference, mm -hmm. in every state, yep. and in every community, and in high schools, you know, <laughs> it should yeah, be shown yeah. everywhere. And so I'm so glad that you all brought this film to us because it was really so beautiful, and especially because it's Black History Month, mm -hmm. I just um, am so appreciative. I do have a couple questions, and so I think for me, one of the questions that I have is something that I hear a lot, which is, that people, especially midwives, who come to conferences and they, they hear the words of the black midwives. And one of the things that they say is, well, what do they mean by tradition? Oh. What does that mean? I would love it if you all could just talk about what, what does that mean to black midwives? Because I don't think we understand, those of us that are not black midwives don't understand that. And so just for un understanding, do you want to take it? To me, tra tradition, um, given my, my great-grandmother, you know, if you had an ailment, she had a bush for it. My grandmother had that too. We took care of ourselves. And knowing what we knew from generation to generation, to me, that's tradition. You know, most of our generation do not know a lot of our traditions. And we've, we've come away from that. And the result of that is what we're having now. You know, our baby's dying, our mommy's not dying. Lack of knowing where you come from and knowing how to take care of yourself and sustain and be knowledgeable of how to be well. So tradition has a lot to work to being well. Now we have to go back to basics and not, not relying on other medicines, but knowing knowledge of how to cook, how to eat, how to take care of yourself. And to me, the tradition, when I say tradition, is going back from the beginning, where even though we were in problems, we knew how to take care of ourselves. And, you know, it was dying there too, but when you look at, if we have all these new technology here, and we're not, and we're still dying, we have to go back to basics, knowing, you know, how to, you know, grow the food, grow the herbs, how to eat better, and back to connecting. We took care of each other. Mm -hmm. If I know she had no food, I bring her food to feed her too. It's about being networking and taking care of her. She having a baby, I come into her house and feed her and clean it for her. It's about going back to taking care of the sisterhood, mm -hmm. take care of the family. You know, if we live in the same <coughs> community, if I know she, her husband, dad, or something, it's my responsibility to go her, go to her. That's tradition, you know. And we 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 lost a lot of that. I feel honored by knowing these women, and you know, just 
if I, I couldn't be here, why not have I not had the sisterhood here? And that's tradition. I agree. I think also, I think when speaking about tradition, I think it's important, specifically in the black community, I think just like Ms. Laverne said, she has, um, you said your great grandmother, I yeah. think, was a midwife. And I also learned through my journey that my great great grandmother was a midwife. But these are things that we didn't know going into the path to midwifery. And I think for any midwife, it is a calling that you get. And we all get it at different moments in our lives. But when you get the calling, I think you know, you learn when it's time to answer to that. And I think that it's important to learn from your past. And you know, um, specifically now, our communities have these high um, numbers of babies dying and moms dying. And I think that's because we moved away from that. We're not, you know, we don't have the community. We don't have those grandmothers, those great grandmothers like mm -hmm. we did, who were in the home that could come and, you know, take care of us when we've had a baby or bring us food. I mean, it's it's a very challenging thing I think in our community specifically. Um, and so I think tradition also goes around. Uh, maintaining what has worked in the past, you know, so using herbs, using what you have in your garden or whatever to heal, you know, different things that come up around birth and pregnancy. And so I think those are some things that we try to carry on as a traditional midwife. In addition, I'd like to add that there's a layer of spirituality that mm -hmm. was always core in what we did. And it went back to the Holocaust of African enslavement when, you know, the spirituals and um, the prayer was always something that before you did anything, you prayed about it. Um, before you, even when you use herbs, like she said, the bush medicines, or you went outside and you worked with plants, you always had an element of prayer. Um, with the ceremonies, the jump in the broom ceremonies, it was always religious. So there's religion and there's spirituality. And that spirituality, in my opinion, is part of the tradition part of that connectedness. Because no matter what religion you are, there's always a level of spirit that connects you. And that's one piece that I can say is starting to dwindle in our community in different ways. And so once you start to get back to the basics, the history, the spirit, the, the um, connectedness with sisters, because we can change things. Yeah. Women are so powerful. Black women are very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And we make, so all women are powerful. All women are powerful. But I'm speaking from my personal perspective. And so when we join forces, we change things. But that level of spiritual connectedness is starting to unravel. Mm -hmm. if, if, a, if a woman who is interested in home birth, a black woman who's interested in home birth, and she's just learning about, she's new, She's just learning about it. What is would your message be to that woman? How can she find you? What, I mean, what is your what would your message be to to somebody that that is learning? I think I can. Well, from my perspective, um, being having been the state representative for ICTC, I think that I still get tons of calls, specifically for women, black women in Arizona, who call me wanting a doula or looking for you know a black midwife, and it really pains me to not to tell them. Well, at the time, you know, I'm like we don't have any black midwives here, you know, so I always refer them to the ones that I know. Um, but I think that it's one of those things where we have to try and come together as a group. There's so many of us in the community that are doing different parts of healing work when it comes to birth and pregnancy. Um, but I think that it's necessary for us to come together as a group so that people know, okay, you can go to this one specific source to find them. And what I usually tell women that want to do home birth is I always tell them to educate themselves about what that means because it's not for everybody. You really have to have a strong mindset. You have to know um, what your options are around pregnancy and birth and, and kind of know what to expect. I mean, I think that's kind of what got me to doing home birth with my children is because I didn't have women in my family that did home birth. I thought my grandmother of seven children had, had home birth, and she was like, oh, no, I had them you know, in the <laughs> hospital. And I was like, really? You know? um, but she was totally amazed the fact that I had a breech birth, that I had you know, my babies at home. And she was like, I'm so proud of you. you know? And that, to me, it showed me that I'm you know, that small, that mustard seed that's starting to make change within my family. And I'm showing them that these things can be done, and they have been done, and they've worked. Um, so I think you know, reading 
you know, you read books and you see movies and things like that to really educate yourself, but you never really know what you're getting into until you're there, but at least you're preparing yourself mentally um, so that you can get yourself in the right mindset um, of what it takes to really bring forth a baby in the home setting because um, it's a special process and you know what I mean? So that's usually what I do is go with education and then point it to people that I do know in the community. A lot of educating um, is allowing her to understand that making that choice means that you become responsible. The power is in your hands. The power is in her hands. And that's such a vital thing when people realize, okay, if you want a home birth, you are making a conscious, you know, you're saying, I want to do this. That you're making that choice. It's not. It was not. It wasn't taking. You're not walking someplace. Say, well, well, what do I gotta do? Mm-hmm. And you're saying, I want to. I want a home birth. And when you realize that, you explain to her what that means, and she realized, I am responsible. All right, let's do this. You know, because when you get to that level of consciousness that I am doing this, I made that decision for myself. Me and my partner were doing that. You're gonna do what you have to do because if you're not willing to do what you're supposed to do, it not gonna happen. But when you make that conscious effort and you do the, ec- the education and you understand, wow, okay, no matter what happens, I made this decision. I could change my mind the last month. I won't go to the hospital. I want drugs. But you still have that choice. It was not taken from you. And, and, and that's the key. You know, when one said to me, I want to be, you know, I want to come and baby home. And the question is, okay, do you know what that means? Mm-hmm. And when you give her that information, she says, well, she'll come back, okay. So what's the midway way? If I don't go to the hospital, if I don't have her home, where's the next place? You give her options. Okay, try a birthing center. You have some autonomy, but you know, you know, you, you, know, you can still change your mind. Mm-hmm. But given women, choices you know and sometimes they're not quite sure what their choices is right. and what does it mean but once you educate and, and that's my whole thing is educate 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 back again educate you know and when we women come to a point of educating ourselves I'm learning more than I even thought this is my second conference I've been to as a midwife and I'm like in overdrive. <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> so education is key. I think um, one ICTC is instrumental. Do you want to just say what that is? Uh, International Center for Traditional Childbearing, founded by Shafia Monroe, um, who's in Portland, Oregon, who has the Black Midwives and Healers Conference. Um, annually, um, right now it's biannually. She has impacted so many women across the world with midwifery. She has um, a sister care doula training that encourages young women to start in the art, um, to get their certifications, to learn some of the early midwifery skills. And so that's one place. Um, here in the Phoenix community, I send them to, um, it depends on how I, I encounter the family. Uh, as a parent educator, um, people start to ask questions because they know who's in the community doing what in some ways. Um, and if they don't know, they're either referenced to Tia <laughs> because she has experience with home birth. Um, good experience. She's a phenomenal mom. She's breastfed and she's um, she's had you as a midwife and she's had really, really rich, wonderful experiences. Um, or I tell them about what a doula is and the, the services that I provide as a doula or parenting education. Or I say, hey, we have this awesome midwife here, this new black midwife, Laverne. And then we have this other midwife, Kim, who's... Um, here, fresh, new in the community. So we pinpoint specific individuals. Lakeisha Muhammad, who has um, a mother's worth, we point them in that direction where we know they're going to get good loving, good quality care, good information, and uh, a mother with homeless <laughs> But we make sure that 
that we put them in the hands of people who are going to nurture them and nurture their path no matter what decision they end up choosing. So just my last question is that we could I know we could talk for hours about how messed up the infrastructure is for midwifery free students <laughs> and for any birth worker of color but especially for black birth workers and um, it is extremely challenging and we don't have enough black doulas we don't have enough black midwives we don't have you know it's just not enough and so I'm just wondering um, what words of encouragement that you all just with your experience and you know if somebody comes to you and they really want to do birth work and they want to serve their community and I know you kind of touched on the ICTC and you touched on some other things but even just any other words of just encouragement for your sisters that might be watching this well for me what, what, being a licensed midwife and a teacher I love teaching I'm ready to talk to teach people who want to start getting educated, come. I'm ready, I'm, my, my doors are open at this point. I, I'm so, I'm listening to all what's going on and realizing that there's not enough up here doing this. And I'm willing to open my door and just have people, you know, bring your books, let's start talking. Let's, let's, feed, let's find out what's going on. The midwife that was supposed to be here tonight, we lived in the same city knew of each other and met here. That's a divine connection, okay? And I'm in awe of her. And she was like, I'm in awe of you. I'm like, mm -mm. you know, but we're here. We're here now. And I'm, I'm ready to tell girls, tell women, I don't care what color you are, particularly if you're a black woman, come. I'm ready to take my art and share it to you. Because, you know, it's, it, we, we need, like the, the movie, movie said, we not we need to really take down this tradition and, and, and teach it so that we could you know start healing our community. So I tell women if you want to start learning information, come. I, I'm putting my name out there. Come. At this point, you know we got to do and I'm, I'm check whatever I got to do in Arizona and starting making the way for the women to come. I'm here. I'm so here. <laughs> what a blessing. Mm -hmm. That really is. <laughs> um, I think for me, my words of encouragement would be that I think for me, because I'm a mother and I've been striving to get to midwifery since probably 95, um, something like that. But um, And I face those daily barriers that we talked about, you know, whether it's financial, whether it's lack of support, having young children, and it's constantly in my face. And Marina will be the first to tell you, every time I have a baby, I'm like, Marina, <laughs> I'm ready to join me. She's like, you know, but I get midwives to tell me all the time, you know, midwifery is a calling and it comes to you in your own time. And that's something that I personally am learning now. It's trying to understand that and be comfortable with that because I'm, I feel ready, but I know that right now it's just the time is not right. Um, so with that, I say I encourage you know our sisters to continue to just stand fast and to not, not give up on your dream, mm -hmm. um, and just let it happen when it does. And you know, in the meantime, I think it's important to embrace the leaders and the other women that we have in our community that are doing what we want to do, and you surround yourself with that love and that energy. Um, so whether it's attending the Black Midwives and Healers Conference, which you'll get phenomenal um, skills, obviously, but you also create your learning and you're getting a family. Um, of yeah. midwives and so I think it's important to to attend that and also you know in wherever in your community where you are you know you embrace around women that are doing the work that you want to do and you just take baby steps to get there um, it is a struggle because for us it is usually a financial challenge um, amongst other things to become a midwife whichever path that you know midwifery you choose but I think that it's important to you know just keep the faith and you just never give up I mean that's I think a mantra of our people in general in history you know so. I um, agree with everything they said, <laughs> but I'd like to add, just do it, you know. Um, it is a journey, mm -hmm. and it is a calling, but if you have a sister who's pregnant, love on her, mm -hmm. go to her prenatal appointments with her. If you have a friend who's pregnant, you know, learn with her, walk with her. Um, if you have younger brothers and sisters, and if you're an age where you're an older sibling, your mother is pregnant. You know, there's a, a journey and there's a learning and there's 
an element of information that you will get firsthand. So wherever you can get your hands on birth, um, whether it's information, whether it's a friend, whether it's um, going to your wise women community, whether it's um, just going on the internet, there's a ton of stuff on birth on the internet right now. Um, it's there and we're in the information age. Mm -hmm. So you can get information if you just want to get your feet wet and become a doula or start to do the work. Um, but if you want someone to nurture you and love on you and help to walk with you on that path, then you're gonna to have to start to seek out people. And you may have to go outside of your community to get it and then bring it back to the community. That's how I met Laverne. I met Laverne at uh, Casa de Nacimiento when I was a student midwife there. And um, I had to go get it. And it, whatever it is that you make a priority, it'll come to pass. It might not come full circle, but you make it a piece here and a piece here and a piece here and a piece here and a piece here. And when you put it all together, eventually you'll have the whole picture in divine time. So I, I was also blessed that when I sought to do this, you know, I was given a gift. The woman that took me in, Lynn Arnold, took me in, didn't even know me from Adam. And I was blessed to be given that gift. That's why I'm willing to give the gift back because I was given, this was a gift to me. Now I could take this gift to my community because it was given to me, I can give it back. Same with ICTC. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sister Shafia, she just, she would say, we need you, we need you in the community, do it. Um, all the midwives that are there, they pour into you, they speak into you, what are you doing in the community? You know, what's going on? Um, how can we mentor you? Uh, we're here, we're available, this is our phone number, this is our information. So they make themselves available and they are our elders in the community, even though they may not be here. You, you can still reach out to them, yeah. but you also have to make an effort to reach out as well yeah. and start to use your voice and start to draw on your resources. So yeah. I'm here. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for letting us bring the so much.